Okay, now we'd better keep this segment short, Mel, because we've gone way over time again. Mm. We've had a lot to talk about. So in this brief segment, we're going to list or we're going to come up with five things each Uh you shouldn't do when you come to Saigon. Shouldn't. Do. Shouldn't do. Yeah. Okay. Is this this is like a clickbaity thing, right? Yeah. <gasps> yeah I'm Don't thinking I'm a, do this. Well, I'm filming this as well, so I'm. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. Okay. I, won't, I don't think I'll do it like that, but right. uh, I am filming it, so um, yeah, we might put it on Instagram or something like All that right. with a few graphics or. Uh, wow. Buttons. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. I think let's ladies. Let's take turns. Okay. Yeah, let's take turns. You come up with one, then All I'll right. come up with one. We have, just as a disclaimer, we have spoken a little bit about this and put together a yeah. bit of a list and then we've tried to narrow it down. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you go first. First one. Number one, don't mm. miss the Reunification mm. Palace. Yeah. Yep. Good one. I like uh, that one. Amazing modernist building, lots of secret detail underground. And come on. It's only like, I don't know, how much is the uh, ticket? It's less than five bucks to get in. I know. Yeah, and you can pretty much spend the whole day there if you want. Yep. You, you wouldn't, but yeah, it's a great place right in the center of town. Beautiful building. And it's kind of stuck in time. Yeah. Like back in the 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. It's an amazing building. Okay, I'm going to go with my first one. Don't drive without a license, especially after drinking. Now, yeah. a lot of people come here with the idea, idea that they're going to rent a motorbike okay. and ride maybe from the top of the country down south or wherever. Which wherever they can. Like. You can, but if you want to do it legally... You've got to have a license, right? Especially, Obviously. knock on wood, if you get into an accident, yeah. your insurance yep. may not pay up yep. if you have no license. And not everyone can get an international driver's license for Vietnam. So you have to check the nationality list or register mm. of people who can actually get an international driving license for Vietnam. And even for people, well, technically to get a Vietnamese driving license like what I've got, you okay. need a temporary resident card. That's true. So, And a lot, well, you need to get your license as well. So it's very tricky. Although there are some motorbike rental companies where they ask you to surrender your passport. Yep. And then they must have no, it. You- I think it's just for them. Okay. It's not. It's not legal. Oh. It's not legal, and no one really advises you to have your right. passport. All okay, right. Well, so then that slips right into. Sorry, and I just wanted to say, in terms of drinking in Vietnam, you've got to have a zero blood alcohol level when you're driving. Mm. Unlike other countries, like I think in Australia, it's zero under 0.05. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. All right, well, <laughs> nice segue to number three. Don't use the taxi if you don't need to. Yeah. Just download, you know, um, ride hailing apps like Grab, Gojek, B. You can choose a car or a motorbike. Yeah. Do you need your credit card to do that? No, you can pay by you can cash. Still pay cash. Yeah. So you can still download the app in Vietnam and activate the app. Yeah, without and just a pay by card. cash. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Why would you take a regular taxi? <laughs> Number four. Which also leads on to when you get to the international airport arrivals and mm. you come out the gate for the first, not the gate, the doors yeah. right at the front, don't bother with the taxi rank. So, you know, there are probably two or three reputable taxi brands in Saigon mm. that that you would use like Venusun, Mylin Taxi, mm-hmm. and Saigon Tourist. What's the yellow one? The Vina. Vina Taxi. Yeah, they're the three that I would only use. Saigon Tourist also has. Um, are they trustworthy though? Those yeah, ones? Are they? I think so. I've never, yeah. I don't think I've ever used it's them. It's grey and pink and blue. Right. Yeah. The rest, they're all scoundrels, mm. and because obviously a lot of flights turn up at the same time, there's scores hundreds of people trying to get a taxi into mm. town the grab car the ride hailing taxis they're not allowed into the airport at the moment only to drop off you can't get them there, as far as i know so what i recommend is 
walk over to the domestic terminal mm. and grab a cab from there. So a while back, there was a trick at the international arrive uh, at the international airport where, after arrival, you go up to the departure rank. I wasn't going to talk about that, but it's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, number five. Don't get offended if someone barks no at you <laughs> or replies with what seems to be a dismissive yeah 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 yeah. Look, it's a direct translation from Vietnamese. Yeah 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 is actually showing respect to older people. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one because mm. when I first came here, I would have younger people saying yeah 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 and in australia yep. that's like yeah yeah shut up okay dismissive, go away yep. dismissive yeah mm. but here they're actually showing respect to you with that response so don't get your back up and the word for no in vietnamese is is said regularly you know all the time and with a lot of expression so yeah. um don't get offended yeah. when someone says no to your face okay mel yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay number six okay don't hang around District 1. Get out of District 1. You can actually walk to District 5 and it's <laughs> fairly easy. District 5 and District 1 are together, a, a, a side to by each side, other. Yeah. joined to each other. It might take a little bit of a walk, but look, Ho Chi Minh City is as flat as a tack. Mm -hmm. There's no climbing of hills. Around. You may fall down a hole somewhere, but... Yeah, get out of D1 and experience things along the way. Explore the alleyways and the markets and things like that. Get off the main roads. Get off the, the sort of the tourist trap mm. trails that are out there. All right. And next, don't be afraid to buy raffle tickets off sellers as often it's their only income. Yeah, that's a good one. And it's actually one of probably the few ways that you can have an interaction with someone with who's a local. genuinely yeah. local. Okay, they're yeah. trying to sell you something, but oftentimes they're older, they're much mm. older. They may have a story to tell. They're likely not going to be able to speak English. Or they're most likely to move on to the next customer yeah. after they get yeah. your 10,000 yeah. dong. It, but it, it yeah. might be, they might be a bit of a pest occasionally, but you know, Look, every now and then. They're better dong. than beg packers, that's yeah. for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're actually out there... Working. You know, trotting the footpaths. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, so that brings me to the next one. Don't have the attitude that everyone is out to rip you off. Mm. And this sort of comes back to getting out of District 1 and perhaps going to District 5 or District 3, District 4. Yeah. Things get very local very quickly mm -hmm. and they're not... They're, they're just going about their normal business and they're, they're not trying to rip you off. What I really like about Vietnam as opposed to, say, Thailand is that the menu in the local restaurants only have one price. Yep. It's the same for yeah, local price, price and tourist price. Yep. So it doesn't have that thing like in Thailand where there's like a secret menu for the locals yep. or that, you know, <laughs> the uh, the characters are in Thai, yep. so you can't really Whereas understand where it is. Whereas at Bentan Market where the, where the stalls are there, yeah. fixed it's price. all fixed, but it's high. Yeah. And it's just for tourists. And really, yeah. the only, the but only people eat there But at least it's tourists. fixed price. You yeah. know that you're not going to get yeah. ripped off. Yep. Okay, and the final one for me is... Don't get caught out, and it happens to me a lot, don't get caught out walking the streets in the middle of the day, especially from mm. this month onwards. We're into March. We're getting into the second part of March, April. We're building towards Summer. the rainy season, the hot season. It just builds and builds and builds until about, well, May, mm. I suppose. We start to to get our first rains for the rainy season, probably even April. It's a bit of a different feeling this year, but from now on, it's getting super hot. And if you're out from high noon onwards till about probably about four o'clock, yeah. just do what the locals do. When in Rome, do what the locals do. Get up early, do your walks, have your early morning brekkie. Sometimes the food's the best you know, first thing in the morning. Your anyway. itinerary sounds like it's for 50 year old <laughs> above. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I mean, you know, you see 
what look to be Europeans getting around who have come out of a winter and mm. then they come here and they're walking the streets in the middle of the day. Trying to and sun they're themselves. Red <laughs> and they're hot and frustrated and sweaty. All right. So, yeah. Uh, do what the locals do. Go and have a nap in the <laughs> early afternoon and then come out later. Do what they do. And last but not least, number 10. Don't assume mm. all coffee is good. <laughs> There's a lot of fake stuff out there. Yeah, there <laughs> is. You'll see a lot of coffee sellers sort of out of the back of motorbikes, pouring coffee out of 1.5 litre Coke bottles, mm. this sort of thing. It's fairly well known that a lot of street coffee can be mixed with cornstarch. Yep. Um, roasted with corn even mm. apparently mm. and whatever other additives so um, yeah I think they've come up with sort of concoctions that that taste like coffee mm-hmm. the real thing so and then it get ma- it gets masked of course with the condensed milk yeah the like a cafe suda like yeah. so yeah be a little bit skeptical don't you know don't dismiss everything but just keep an eye out for it it's pretty hard to tell but I guess, it, you know, look, f- try and look for reputable places that are selling coffee. You know, there, there are thousands of them anyway. So, yeah. 